there's a malfunction in the infirmary. There's something wrong with the turbo lift. And every time Quark serves a flaming cocktail, the fire suppression system engages and snuffs it out. Ah, this kind of stuff always happens when Chief O'Brien is gone. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Seventh Rule with Ciroc Lofton. Hey, hello, hello. My name is Ryan T. Husk. We have a very special guest today, Mr. Brian Volk Weiss. Hello. Uh, thank you we, for having me. Thank you for joining in the fun. This is going to be thank awesome. You. We're doing a review of Deep Space Nine, Season 6, Episode 15, Honor Among Thieves, story by Philip Kim. We'll have to look that up. Uh, later, and written by Rene Echevarria, and uh, directed by Alan Eastman. Srock, do you remember Alan Eastman? I don't. I actually, um, I saw his name in the credit, and I was trying to think if I had ever worked with him, uh, and I don't remember working with him, but I'm going to double check that right now. Oh, he's Canadian from Manitoba. Uh, yeah, I don't remember working with him. You know what? Um, I just looked it up. Deep Space Nine. This is the only episode he's done for Deep Space Nine. So that's yeah. why. But how that's are you, Brian? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? Thank you for having me on. Awesome. Very, uh, very honored. So very happy to have you joining us. This is really cool. Um, for everybody at home, you, know, if you can help Brian out. He, he actually he needs some, some kind of action figures. I he's know got where a this is going. Scarce collection <laughs> behind him, and if you can help him out and fill up some shelving space, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's the understatement of the millennium. Uh, We're just way, two strips of platinum aside, a day. <laughs> all, all jokes aside, I don't need more toys. I need more shelves, so then I can get more <laughs> toys. That's, by the way, the, I, I know it's funny. I know it's a joke, but it was, I mean, completely inspired by real thoughts. Mm. Oh, I, I'm out of space. I got toys <laughs> yeah. holding up toys. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> yeah, toys inside of your toys. It's an extensive collection there. I and now we see where all your money goes. You you make money and you spend them on action figures. It's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Pretty much. And I'll tell you this: there are people that like have seen what you're looking at, and they're like, "That's crazy." And then they've come into the room, you know, eventually at some point. <laughs> so they know what they're getting into. And they walk in and they're still like, I mean, what you see behind me, it's the whole room. I mean, it's wow. crazy, except for the door. That's what wow. that's 360 degrees. And in the middle, there's an island with a USS flag on it. So, uh, yeah, okay. with every pretty much every vehicle it can fit. So this begs the Everyone question, and we'll definitely talk about this episode in a second, but this begs the question, I'm sure you've been asked this a million times, what's your favorite toy out of all of them? Not to split hairs. Oh, and by the way, asked, every, like, everybody at home, Brian here did a uh, little docu-series for Netflix called The Toys That Made Us. So this isn't a coincidence here. This isn't, this isn't <laughs> fun. This is work for him. I'm sorry, Brian. Please continue. <laughs> Yes, very difficult, very difficult, like a salt mine. Um, no, it's it's a difficult. Are you asking that about like emotionally? What is it? Because um, if we're talking I think emotion, Star right? Trek ones, right? Are you just oh, specifically Star, Star Trek, right? Star Trek season. anything. Star Trek okay. season. Right over there, I have my uh, my Constitution class. You can't see it in this shot. Uh, I have my Constitution class refit. Uh, from when I was a kid, little Ertle, it's made of metal, but like I hand painted the impulse engine. I hand painted the nacelle drive, like or the nacelle drive, the uh, deflector dish. So oh. it's that. Well, I'll tell you something. One of the beautiful things about living in California, for all of you who don't live here, let me let me entice you to move here. Um, three years in a row uh, because of fires. I've had to evacuate my house. So the first time it happened, having never had to evacuate before, um, we just ran. And uh, I didn't, I, you know, I grabbed a couple things, but luckily I get to keep practicing evacuating. And now <laughs> luckily. I have a luckily. <laughs> shelf over there that's like all the stuff I got to grab before we evacuate. And that yep, includes like two enterprises. I got my D there as well. 
my urnal from when I was a kid. Do you have like a giant duffel bag, like right below the shelf? So you could just, just shove them all in and run. <laughs> Want me to really answer that? Cause it's crazy. <laughs> Uh, I think yes, right, Sirach? <laughs> when you say, do you want me to really answer it? Now I really want you to answer it. Yes. Yep. There's a closet, just to use a fancy term to impress you, with a pelican case inside it mm -hmm. for the specific purpose of yearly evacuations. And I literally open it, and there's little slots cut out in it for my <laughs> R2-D2, for my Enterprises. I got my original uh, Ralphie, uh, what do you call it? Raphael from uh, Ralph Wiggum. So oh, Ralph not Wiggum. Ninja Turtles. <laughs> uh, signed by uh, Peter Laird. So I got all my, uh, by the way, the first time I evacuated, there's one thing in this collection that's probably worth 60% of everything that's in this room. And I forgot to take that. So <laughs> just to show, just to let you know, evacuating is not fun. It's a Jake Cisco action figure. Everybody knows. Signed, signed Jake. Right signed by there. Aaron Eisenberg with a middle <laughs> finger. <laughs> uh, Brian, do you have uh, are your, is some of your stuff autographed? Too? You mentioned having a signed piece. Is there other stuff that you have that are signed? Oh, almost nothing. In fact, uh, I recently had a, a member of the uh, the main uh, crew of the of Next Gen, uh, and I could tell. This person was um, like Ed Spiner. Should should I should I sign? Should I, like, and I'm like, no, 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 it's okay. But yeah, I've never really been an autograph person. Um, yeah, I've never really been an autograph person. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. All yeah. right. By well, the way, Shrock, can I? This would be a good time to ask you for yours. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I've never never been into it. I don't know. I'll blend that for you. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, it's 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 just a matter of taste, really. And um, you know, I, I like I didn't know that you're a model builder. It seems that you you actually take the time to build models, though. That's a whole separate category yeah. of, of you know, investing time into it. So I, I like that. Yeah, for somebody that doesn't build models, I'm really good. For anybody <laughs> that builds models, I'm like a, like a D plus, C minus on a good day. <laughs> Okay. My, my signature I'm, move is my fiber optics uh, tend to burn through the model. That's my that's my signature move. I've never built a model before, down. so I've got no bloody A, B, C, or D. Oh, um, uh, just blow up the damn ship. There we go. This guy gets right. it. Here we go. Um, we well, let's talk wars? about. Sorry, <laughs> we doing quote wars? <laughs> no, I, I I can do a few, but that's about as far as it goes. Um, but let's talk about this episode a little bit. Um, otherwise, I will go into autograph conversations because I got a lot of fun stories about that. And I feel like Brian's got a few and I feel like Sirach has about 300. Uh, <laughs> but, but, I bet. So this was, and Sirach, you know, I thought of you the second this episode starts because you immediately can tell oh, I get it, bottle episode, right? You could just tell. You're, you're putting it, you know, whether they're back in time or whether O'Brien is in a prison cell, it's definitely what they call an O'Brien must suffer episode. And as soon as it starts, some people go, cool. And other people go, eh. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm a little less on the, the mafioso type movies and stuff like that. I think I'd probably be the lesser of the three of us here and the the mafia type things but Sirach, you like that stuff yeah yeah i'm, I'm i like the mafia movies um <laughs> bronx tale donnie brasco goodfellas you know i, I just mm -hmm. like those kinds of movies and uh, obviously the godfather um but you know I, I like the idea of this organized crime, kind of like rooting for the bad guys where, Definitely. you know, you, you, you kind of feel for these guys in some way or another. If they're not so bad, there's different varying degrees of badness, I guess, is what you can see when you watch those movies. Um, Casino is another great one. Um, but, you know, I'm a big fan of the genre. So when I saw this, 
I right away, I, you know, was like, okay, this is going to be something up my alley. This is a Donnie Brasco type of thing. And I actually think it's it, it's exactly Donnie Brasco. I don't, I don't know how really? you guys feel. It, it seems as if they actually, like, literally plagiarized Donnie Brasco. Because <laughs> I, I looked it up. I had to look up to see what year did, Bras- did Donnie Brasco come out. And that movie came out in 97. Oh, a year this, before. This came out in 98. So I'm, I know that they they had to have plagiarized the movie. I mean, they scene by scene had literally stealing um, shots and scenes from the movie. I mean, it, I was waiting for Al Pacino to come in there and say, hey, forget about it. You got to be Pizzoli's, uh, you start, know. Start okay. cracking open the parking meter. That's my okay. favorite moment in the whole yeah. movie. He's sitting there trying to open the, the, the Okay, that is really weird yeah. because I've never seen Donnie Brasco. And I thought yeah. that that Big B guy, I thought he would, I, he reminded me of, of Al Pacino completely. Like the yeah. way he was yeah. acting and whatever. I was like, I was like, they're, they're, they're getting an Al Pacino guy. Now, I don't know if Al Pacino is that character in Donnie Brasco, but it seemed to me, like that's the first thing that hit me. I was like, this guy reminds me of he's he's kind of acting like Al Pacino, you know, doing doing that move. So that's really funny to to hear you guys say that. It was funny. My first job in LA in Hollywood ever. I worked on this movie called Going Back to Cali. Mm-hmm. It was an all black cast, and it was a complete. It was literally literally black swingers every night. We were shooting in Vegas. All the crew and everybody would watch swing the scene in Swingers that we were shooting the next day. And then <laughs> it was, I mean, they, they tweaked it, like, of course, so they didn't get sued. Right. But we literally, the cast and crew would sit there at night watching the scene, like taking it in. And to your point about Al Pacino, the talent during the shooting because I was there at night in the hotel room so I could really compare and contrast the talent, even though they were openly talking about being worried about being perceived as doing an impression of Vince Vaughn or whatever, they were absolutely doing impressions of Vince Vaughn and everybody. <laughs> I mean, and it, it was literally carbon copied except for what the actors looked like. So it does happen. Going back to Cali. how do you get away with that? I mean, just by changing it up enough, like changing up the scenes enough. I you mean, know, because I I, I I was thinking if I wrote if I wrote Donnie Brasco, I'd be suing uh, the DS Nine production over this episode. There's no way you came up with these. He's in a bar, you know. He gets discovered at the bar, the same like Donnie Brasco gets discovered with the jewelry, and you know, is that Fugazi? I mean, it was just like. <laughs> All they needed was it, it they... happens. I mean, it ha- have you, yeah. did you ever watch Heroes? Uh, a little bit, a little bit. That Heroes NBC show, yeah, the show about the cheerleader. No, I didn't see that one. Yeah, like the me, there was the blonde Hayden, like Planetarium or something. She played a cheerleader, yeah, like, huge yeah, yeah, show. Probably. It's like yeah. four or five years. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure that used to be called X Men. Like it, it's X Men. I mean, it's literally X Men. And every, literally, I watched the first episode. I'm like, how are they not getting sued? And it went on for years. And then you're like, yeah. all right, I, I guess you can just change names and and re- redo a script. Mm-hmm. It happens. Well, and that's what it happens, people do. Yeah. That's kind of their pitch. They'll say it's this meets this, or it's this yeah. but over here, or it's this with this twist. And then, you know, the people they're pitching to go, oh, that's really cool. You know, that sounds great. But what they don't realize is sometimes they mean like, it's literally this. <laughs> it's literally. <laughs> not just like, I'm not trying to help you understand it. I'm but, saying this but, is what it is. <laughs> but Ryan, that's yeah. okay if you're a writer pitching. It's very right. different when you are the actor Viacom trying making... to replicate yeah. Al Pacino in Scarface or whatever yeah. it is. Hey, say hello to my little friend. Right? If you, like, if you're literally doing that as an actor, then I think yeah. that's that's kind of uh, that's too much of a ripoff in some to some degree. Mm-hmm. Too much. And to Brian's Let's, points, as as the suits, you got to be extra careful. 
But that's what I find funny, because if you're a writer pitching a script, it's OK to say it's Donnie Brasco meets Star mm-hmm. Trek. Uh, yeah. It's very different when you're the showrunner of Star Trek making the show for Viacom and you're like, <laughs> I got an idea. What if we take the show we're actually making right now and combine it with a movie I saw last week that I loved? Like, <laughs> that's that's a major difference. That's a, yeah. that's a big caveat. Well, let me ask you this. Did Donnie Brasco have a cat? Because they immediately <laughs> did that with this character, Bilby. Yeah, Bilby. And we've mentioned this a couple of times before, the way that you always want to make sure people realize that even if you're introducing a bad guy, if you want that bad guy to be uh, relatable or, you know, a sympathetic character, they say, save the cat. Well, in this case, they're just like, give him a cat. You know what I mean? And that's in the first first thing he does, basically, after he meets him, is says, oh, here's my precious little foo-foo kitty, right? Who, by the way, was freaking adorable. That's fine. I get it. But like, that's the first thing they do. So you immediately know, oh, okay, I see. So we're supposed to, they're going to lead us into sympathizing for this character rather than thinking of him as the bad guy. I don't know if that's kind of the, the way Donnie Brasco went. It sounds like it, <laughs> but. Um, Absolutely. They, they literally, uh, they, they stole verbatim the, 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 ver- the, the verbiage in the Donnie Brasco where he says, I vouched for him. I vouched for this guy. Uh, that's a Donnie Brasco. Really? You know. Wow. Yeah. Lefty, who's played by Al Pacino, uh, vouches for Donnie Brasco in front of the mob, Sonny Black and Sonny Red, the two bosses. And and at some point, Al Pacino looks over at Donnie Brasco, played by, um, what's his name? The, you know, Johnny big, Depp. Big actor, Johnny Depp. And he looks at him and says, do you know what I just did for you there? I just vouched for you. I just, you know, I, I put my name, means nobody can touch you, means you, you're with me now, right? And so that whole idea of, of being vouched for and the way it went down exactly was duplicated in this where the Bill B, who's playing lefty, Bill B, it vouches for uh, yeah. O'Brien in the same way in front of the rest of the Orion Syndicate. So, yeah. It's it's literally they watched this movie, went home and said, "How can we do this in Star Trek?" Period. Point blank. There's no other way around it. Mm-hmm. Sounds like it. Yeah. I mean, because that's, it, it, that's yeah. sorry. No, go ahead, Rob. Right. Sorry. Yeah, because it's not just that. There's other things, um, like you said. You mentioned the the cat, but it's not the cat in in the uh, Donnie Brasco movie. Um, uh, lefty, the lefty, who's the you know Al Pacino character, is um, somebody you empathize with because he brings Donnie into his home. He lets him, you know, eat. He, he, my wife's cooking, you know, mm. and they're sharing moments about his son. He says, you know, my son's a degenerate gambler or drug addict. You know, I got bruises on my hands, Donnie, from trying to fix him up. So you know the whole you start to feel for lefty. You start to say, well, this guy's not so bad. You know, he's a, he's not a murderer. He's not this, he's not that. He's kind of a real guy just trying to take care of his wife and kid. And, you know, he's, the mob is his basically job. And so you start to empathize and feel for him. And Donnie starts to feel for lefty and, and, and doesn't want to arrest him at some point and doesn't want him to go down for the crimes that he's you know, affiliated with. So, that's that's essentially the major thing that has been Interesting. Um, hijacked. To me, the cat is literally has one purpose. I mean, yes, to give sympathy, sure, but it sets up the last moment yes. of the episode. Like they needed a way to end it with emotion and gravitas. And the, the trick of doing that is you subtly wind that into the tapestry of an article of a episode mm-hmm. and then it pays off at the end. And that I can't let, let, let me ask you guys a question. I'm like a huge Trekkie, but like 
I'm in my own little world and like, I'm not like, I'm not, I'm not on all the blogs or all the whatevers and everything. So I'm always curious, like the episodes I like, I'll like, I'll find out one of my favorite episodes everybody hates and vice versa. (laughs) Like what is the person? Like, I love this episode. Like to me, this Mm. episode is what I like to call a very special episode of, and like, I remember as a little kid, I saw a Growing Pains episode where it was a very special episode. And it was like, I think Kirk, I think it's where Kirk Cameron loses his virginity. And there's this whole moment where you see him putting his sweater on. Like, I was too young to even understand it. I remember just being like, wait, why the hell did it say parents advisor? Now he can put on a sweater. sweater. Yeah. (laughs) So I have loved this episode. Is Mm. this a beloved episode, a hated episode, a okay. no one talks about it episode. Well, as somebody that does float around the blogs and all, oh, we've got to go to a commercial, everybody. So now um, we do have to go to our break in just a second. But I will say this is not an episode that people talk about often, whether it be praise or dislike. It's just kind of flies under the radar. It's it's kind of a bottle episode. So I think it's one of those things where it's like some people, you know, like it, some people don't, but I don't see, you know, because when I heard the title, when I read the title, even then I didn't remember the episode, which means it's just not really discussed terribly often. Um, But I just want to make one final point when you mentioned bringing the cat, you know, in that final scene, that's kind of like the flute in uh, the right in uh, what episode, the inner light. Or something like that, where at the very end they they need that memory or that token of that friend or of that experience that they had to take it with them. Um, you know, and Star Trek is usually really good at By that. By the way, it's funny. It's funny you say that. Inner Light is the Donnie Brasco of so many other movies and TV shows. The amount of movies <laughs> I've seen, and I'm like, well, obviously you've seen Inner Light. <laughs> totally. Right, right. It's like that, that episode is ripped off. By the way, same thing for cause and effect. The amount okay. of movies. Oh, I want to talk more Sorry. about that after the break because you just hit Sorry. two of the best episodes, I think. Hang on. Uh real quick, we'll be right back. It's gonna be like a one and a half second break. Everybody will be right back on the seventh rule. <laughs> 